<laughs> uh, I'm going to be serious this evening, which is a rarity for me, but um, what I'd like to do is tonight we're going to look at a few corners. Um, throughout the Bible, as we find the word corner as it appears, typically we'll find significant things tied with corners in the Bible. So tonight we're going to go to the book of Proverb. Proverbs. Proverbs. <laughs> I'm being serious. Remember, you're not helping. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 7, to be specific. And uh, I'd like to give a little preface for the ladies in the room, please. As I read these verses, this is going to make sense, but don't jump to any conclusions. Uh, don't get mad at me until you hear what I have to say. So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 7. I don't hear as many pages running. My words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and behold, among the simple ones I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met he, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without and now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me this day, have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her, such, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With her flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to a snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Now if you'll turn with me over to Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. And verse 9. Proverbs 21 and verse 9 reads, It is better to dwell in a house of the a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. And then a few pages over, Proverbs 25, verse 24. Proverbs 25 and verse 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Now, if I've researched correctly and if I've read correctly, I've, I've, I've now read the four corners that exist in the book of Proverbs. Now, at each of these corners, well, let's see. First, we, we, I just want to break it down because I really do want to set the table before we get into the, this. Um, in Proverbs chapter 7, we see corners twice, and then again in 21, and then again in chapter 25. Now, at each of these corners, a woman is mentioned. She's a woman of wickedness and ungodliness. She's a woman... That is a fighting woman in both passages. Now, although in each of our passages a woman is mentioned, women do not have a corner on wickedness and sin. Women do not have a corner on bad attitudes, on brawling, on anger. Men can be just as wicked, if not more wicked, than women. So although in these scriptures we have a woman mentioned, tonight we're addressing everybody. I could just as easily go to Proverbs 22 where the verse 24 reads, Make no friendship with an angry man, and, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Or we could go to Proverbs 29, and verse 22, where it says, An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. So again, I want to make it clear that although a woman is mentioned in these verses, this applies to each and every one of us. They, uh, there is no corner, there is no monopoly on sin, on wickedness, or strife in the home. Now the wickedness mentioned in chapter 7 is lust, immorality, adultery. The wickedness mentioned in chapter 21 and 25 is anger and contention and strife in the home. Now, I'd like to make a suggestion to you this evening that the woman that we read about in Proverbs chapter 21 and Proverbs chapter 25 is the same woman 
that we read about in Proverbs chapter 7. It's just a little further down the road. What's happening in Proverbs 21 and 25 is he's finding out what he got in Proverbs chapter 7. In Proverbs 7, she flatters, and in Proverbs 21, he's finding out the rest of what's involved with what he got himself tied up in. And that's exactly how sin always is. It flatters. It lures us in, and then later on down the road, time goes by, and we see that sin has a hold in our lives and doesn't deliver what it promises in the beginning. Now, the word loud used in Proverbs chapter 7 to describe this woman means boisterous, to, to rage, to make a tumult, to make a clamor. And then in Proverbs 21, she's called a brawler, which means to be boisterous or to uh, cause strife or contention. So I believe it is the same woman just a little further down the line. I want to show you that this woman in Proverbs chapter 7 is a picture of wickedness and sin because of what God is warning us about in this passage. Tonight I want to show us the progression of sin and wickedness in our lives how sin and wickedness enters our lives, how it expands in our lives, how it destroys our lives, and then with the help of God, where the help is for sin. We might just find an answer to the problem of sin. I'd like to go just immediately right into verse 8. Back into Proverbs chapter 7. I hope you've kept your place there. If not, I'll give you a little bit of time to go back. But in Proverbs chapter 7, in verse 8, we read, "...passing through the street near her corner." She has a corner, and it's down on a particular street. This is what we'll call the entering place of sin. We have a young man void of understanding, and I take that to mean that he won't listen to good godly counsel. He won't listen to people who are trying to give him the Word of God and good counsel. And I believe that because Solomon starts this verse with, let's see, verse 1, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. And my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. But we have here a young man who doesn't want to listen to good godly counsel. That is what makes him void of understanding. So here we have a young man who won't listen to anyone and he won't listen to good counsel, but he's listening to somebody because apparently somebody has told him that down on such and such a corner, on such and such a street, there's something going on. So he's heard about this, and he's probably been warned about it. How many times growing up have you heard from your parents, I don't want to hear about you being in such and such a neighborhood. I don't want to hear about you being wrapped up with such and such a people. Don't let me catch you around so and so. And they warn because they know that there's a place where sin and wickedness can enter in your life and get a foothold. So here we have a young man. And he's gone to her corner, and he's spent time at her corner. He won't listen to good counsel, but he will listen to someone. Because he's gone down to her corner. Sin has a corner. There's a place that sin has. If he stays away from that corner, he's not going to get messed up with sin. But if he goes to her corner, he exposes himself to the sin and wickedness that's in her heart. And that sin and wickedness gets in his life. And in every one of our lives, there are corners. You may have corners that you can go to that I can't, but there are corners that none of us ought to go near. That is why when the preacher gets up, he says, you ought not to listen to this kind of music. You ought not to watch these kind of things. You ought not to hang out with these kind of people. There are things that you shouldn't be doing. Don't look at your phone. Don't do those things. And we think he's stubborn. We think he's hard-headed. We think he's just an old-fashioned, hard-headed, independent Baptist. But what he knows is he knows that there's a corner where you will get tied up in sin and wickedness. He knows that if you go down to her corner, that you will get tied up. You and I have corners. You might not be able to go near the corners that I can go near. But again, there's corners that even none of us... You might say, well, Brother Josh, I've got... Listen, I, I dealt with this, but I can, I can take care of it. Did you read the end of chapter 7? Did you see where he says, Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. I'm talking about strong men, men who should have known better. Throughout the Bible, men and women we read about... I'm going to sweat because I guess I don't walk this much. (laughs) Throughout the Bible, we hear of men and women that have been on a corner they shouldn't have been in. Eve was down on a corner she shouldn't have been in. She was down there looking at the tree, and you say, how do you know she was looking at the tree? Because the Bible says she saw the fruit that it was pleasant to look upon. She was in a corner she never should have been in. Abram, when there was a famine in the promised land, and he was out of God's will, and he goes into Egypt, and he brings this little Egyptian maid, Hagar, and oh, what trouble was caused because of Hagar. 
He was on a corner he never should have been in. Lot, when he cast his tent towards Sodom, was in a corner he never should have been in. Achan, when he looked down and saw that fine Babylonian garment, was on a corner he never should have been in. Where was he going to wear that Babylonian garment? Everybody would have known where it was from. But sometimes sin overlaps common sense. David was at a corner he never should have been in when he arose at eventide at a time where kings should have been off to war. But here David is. I wonder why he was up at eventide. Because he was out of God's will. There was no peace in his heart. So David is up on the corner of this housetop and he looks upon Bathsheba and he calls and he inquires and they say, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sends for her and he commits sin with her and he gets all tied up because he went to a corner that he never should have been at. You and I have a corner. We have corners that we should not go near. Lust is the sin mentioned here in Proverbs 7, but there's all kinds of sins. There's all kinds of corners. There's pride. There's bitterness. There's unforgiveness. There's, I can't even read my own writing, slothfulness and its type. This is the sadder part. There's sins and more waiting at the corner. And there's places that we need to keep ourselves out of. We need to, as the scripture exhorts us, to walk circumspectly. Now, I've used this analogy in talking to a couple of the men of the church, but an old preacher said, you know what it means to walk circumspectly? He says, there's an old tomcat, and he's walking on top of this rickety little alley fence. And on one side of the fence is a Rottweiler, on the other side of the fence is a, uh, is a Doberman Pinscher. And both got that, I haven't had breakfast since Tuesday, and they're licking their chops. You know, every step that cat takes, he's going to walk circumspectly. You and I ought to walk circumspectly. This is the entering place of sin. But watch here. There's another corner in Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 7. Verse 12 begins with the word now. The word now is a timeline word, right? It takes us to a time. We do this and now we do this. So verse 12 puts us on a timeline. Now, verse 12 starts with now when we realize that we've moved down the timeline just a little bit than when we started. Verse 12 reads, now she is without, now watch this, now in the streets. Wait a minute, in verse 8, it was street. Now it's streets. Street singular, now we're at streets plural. Now watch this, verse 12 then says, and lieth in wait at what? Every corner. What's happened here? This is the expanding presence of wickedness and sin in our lives. Once you start going down to her corner, pretty soon you're going to see her on every corner. Once you let sin get a foothold in your life, sin won't say, okay, that's far enough. We've done too much. We've caused enough hurt. We've caused enough pain. We're going to stop. No, sin will take over your life. Sin will be found on every corner. Pretty soon, you've gone down to a corner you shouldn't have been in. You've let sin get a foothold in your life. And now, everywhere you look, everything you do, everything you see is sin. I, uh, I had an opportunity a few months back to talk with somebody. I won't name his name. And... And he begins telling me about all these things that he's done in his youth. And, and out of high school, he got married and he knew he shouldn't have and all of that stuff. But here he is down the line. Now he's got a wife and kids. And he has another, well, I'm trying to figure out how to put this. He had a wife and kids and they thought it was best if they didn't see each other anymore. So that's no longer a thing. And, and now he's down the road. And now every time that he has his kids over, he's trying to undo all the wickedness that his ex-wife has put in their hearts toward their father. You know what he's saying? All that sin, all, that, all those things that I visited, all those things that I did, now they're everywhere. Now they're on every corner. Right after I got saved, I had a chance to talk to a friend of mine. And it was interesting to me because I, I, was, I was excited. I, was, I, was, I, was, I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus Christ, which I still do. That is, that is the good mark of a child of God. We ought to want to tell everybody about the good news. Lord willing, that's where we're going to get to by the end of this evening. But I'm talking to him and he tells me, I can't be saved. I said, now what do you mean you can't be saved? Jesus Christ, is, he's already paid the, the price for every sin. You, you can't be saved. What do you mean? He goes, I've done too much. I, I've seen too many things. I've done too many things in my life. And I'm at a point where God can't save me. Do you know what he's saying? She's on every corner. Young men, middle-aged men. I hesitated even using this example. But they go around and they look at things they ought not to look at. They go around and they look at things that nobody ought to look at. Then down the road, they can't look at anything purely because if they lay their eyes on things that they ought not to. They've been down to a corner and now everywhere they look, 
She's on every corner. You may say, well, I've got this corner, I've got, I've got this sin, and, and I've got it under control, and I'm able to manage it just fine. You'll never be able to keep sin under control. You'll never be able to take sin out of a little compartment in your life, play with it, and then put it back and go on about your life. Sin will be on every corner, everywhere you look, everything you do, everything you see, she will be on every corner. Not just street, streets. Let's look at the third corner, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9, says, It is better to dwell... I'll wait. We'll just dwell here for a moment. I promised I was going to be serious. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Now, again, I'm suggesting to you that what we have here in Proverbs 21 is the same woman we met in Proverbs chapter 7. In Proverbs chapter 7, she flattered... And now we have this man that doesn't want to be anywhere near her. Now, I don't know if you saw this in that verse, but it's at a wide house. We're not talking a shack. We're not talking a mini house. We're not talking a travel trailer. He's got a nice house, but he's not enjoying his nice house. He may have been successful in some other part of his life, but he's not able to enjoy it. You know why? When you're up on the rooftop, when the sun beats down on you, you burn. When the rain beats down on you, you get soaked. When the winter comes in, you freeze. When the wind beats against you, you're torn. And what he's saying is he'd rather endure all of that than to be down with what's waiting for him inside. Now, again, I'm not picking on women. Men can be just as bad. But I will say, the Scripture does say that a contentious woman is like a continual drip on a very rainy day. Now, I was at Brother Isaac's house a couple weeks ago, and right next to his tool trailer, or his tool uh, garage, is a little metal foot. And if you move that metal foot, you'll see a hole in the cement. It's about that deep. It's where the two eaves meet, and continual dripping has worn away that cement. A contentious husband or a contentious wife will wear away a relationship. That's not in here, but it fit real well. Notice in verse 9, it, said it, is, it says, It is better to dwell in a corner. Proverbs 21, verse 9. It is better to dwell in a corner. I take this to mean any corner. Any corner. Anything will do. Anything is better than what's waiting for him downstairs. If you go down to her corner and sin and wickedness gets a hold on your life, pretty soon sin and wickedness is going to be on every corner and it's going to affect every part of your life and going to, you're going to spend your life trying to get away to any corner that you can get to, trying to find something that will take away the trouble that you're in. You're going to find yourself someplace you never dreamed that you'd be. You'd find yourself doing things you never dreamed you'd do. You'll be trying to get away from that sin that you've allowed in your life. You remember Saul in the Bible? When Saul was anointed to be king, the Bible says he was head and shoulders, or he was, he was tallest among the people, right? When Saul was anointed he, and became king, he took counsel from the likes of Samuel, the greatest prophet in, the, in this time up to this point. But Saul had a pride problem. He cast out everybody with familiar spirits, but Saul had a pride problem. And I know Saul had a pride problem because Samuel said to Saul at one point, when thou was little in thine own eyes, as if to say, Saul, you know, there was a time where you didn't think so much of yourself as you do now. So Saul went down to pride's corner and pride got a foothold in Saul's life. And now it's affected every area of his life. Coming back from the defeat of Goliath, when he ought to be rejoicing that the enemies of God are dead. The women meet them at the gate or at the city and they say, David has, has slain his ten thousand, Saul but thousands. And Saul gets his feelings hurt. Saul says, they've ascribed unto David ten thousands, but to me they've ascribed thousands. And what can he have more than the kingdom? Then after, the Bible, the, and after that, the Bible says that Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And then a little later, it says that Saul made himself David's enemy continually. You see, Saul let pride in. He went down to pride's corner. And now pride is everywhere, and it's affecting everything he does. So now, 
Saul's been rejected and the kingdom has been rent from him. And we find him where he cannot get a hold of God. In 1 Samuel 28, it says, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. So now where are we going to find him? We find him down at Endor. If you're familiar with the story, there's a witch, a woman with a familiar spirit. He's bowed down at her feet asking her for counsel. So you have the man that stood head and shoulders above Israel bowed down at the feet of a witch. You have a man who got his counsel from the likes of Samuel. And now he's getting his counsel from the very mouthpiece of hell. You find the man that one time put out all people in Israel that had familiar spirits. And now we find him saying this. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Saul swears to her in the name of God that she can sin and nothing's going to happen to her. How does a man sink like that? Her corner? Every corner? And now any corner will do to get away from what he's let in his life. But you remember there's one more corner. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 25. I don't know if you noticed when we read it, but if you have a King James Bible that hasn't been messed around with and reads the way it ought to, now this will show you why it is so important that every jot, every tittle, every word is important. There's a reason the Lord has preserved His Word this long. And we're going to see that difference. See, Proverbs 25, 24 reads just a little bit different than Proverbs 21, 9 did. They sounded awful lot alike though, didn't they? Proverbs 21, 9 says that it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop. But if you have the King James Bible that hasn't been messed with, you'll see Proverbs 25, 24 reads this way. It is better to dwell in the corner. Now, what's the difference between a, any corner, and the corner? A corner means trying to find anywhere that we can get away with, to get away with what we've allowed in our life. But the corner means there's only one place. The would mean specific. It would mean only one. Why would that be important to us? Let's compare Scripture to Scripture. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 3. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 3 it says, Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats, for the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them, that's the house of Judah, as his goodly horse in the battle. Now listen to this in verse 4. Out of him, that's out of Judah, came forth the corner. Can I remind you who it was that came out of Judah? Who was the lion of Judah? The scepter? Shiloh? The king? We're finding out that this corner in Proverbs chapter 25 is not a place. It's a person. And that person is Jesus. He came from Judah. He is the corner. So here's what we're finding. Here's a young man, and he went down to her corner. Now she's on every corner. Everywhere he goes, she's involved in every part of his life. Now he's hunting a corner, any corner that he can get away from her. But now, my friend, there is the corner. And if you run to the corner, he'll help you out with any other corner you've ever been on in your life. You remember that guy who was sleeping up on the roof? When it rained, he got soaked. When it was cold, he got frozen. When it wind, he got torn. When it was sun, he got burnt. Look at Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 2. Reads, and a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great walk in a weary land. I wonder who it is that that's covert. That's a covert in the in the tempest. Who's a shelter in the storms? Who is it that's a shadow when it's hot? Who's a rock in a weary land? That man is Jesus, the Savior of the world. And if you run to Him, He will help you out of any other corner you have ever been on. In fact, He's your only hope if you've got yourself in a corner. Remember, people used to say when they wanted to help you out, they'd say, I'm in your corner. Now, he's in your corner, and he's the corner. 
I watched a young man who, who spent his life running from corner to corner and trying to get away from all that, he'd, all that he'd been in, all the trouble that he'd gotten into. And he ran to the corner, and his life is completely different. I've seen people inside this church that they have been on every corner. They've been down to sin's corner. Now it's everywhere they look. Everything they do, they're sin. Now they're searching for any corner. But when they find the corner, the Lord completely cleans them up. He makes a new creature. You noticed that he never said, I will clean up the old creature. He says, I make a new creature. If you'll cut chase in all those other corners, and if you'll come to the corner and get honest with him, he'll change your life. You don't have to turn here, but David says in Psalm chapter 51, verse 10, and he prays, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David believed that God was able to create in him a clean heart when his heart had gotten dirty. Some people will say, there's not hope for me. There isn't any hope for me. And I say to that friend, there is always hope. You'll have to run to the corner. Now, before David says, Create in me a clean heart, he said in verse 6, Behold, Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. So David's telling us that when you get to the corner, you're going to have to be absolutely honest with him. You're going to have to be absolutely honest and tell him the truth. And he'll begin to work at creating a clean heart in you and renewing a right spirit. But if you don't come to him, you're going to be running to every corner you can find and try to find someone to help, some relief, and you're never going to find it. He's the only corner that you're going to find that's going to help you. The Bible says He's the chief cornerstone and He's the foundation upon which your life must be built. I look back at my own life and I see the corners that I spent my life on. And I see the hold that sin had in my life. Searched for anything and everything I could to fill that. But when I came to the corner... He changed my life. So my question to you this, this evening, if I can pose you a question, is what corners have you gotten yourself in? Maybe you find yourself a little distance from the Lord this evening. Maybe you find yourself where you ought not to be. Maybe you find yourself wandering those corners. You're looking around, and she's on every corner. It's real simple. The corner. He can get you away from any of those other corners. We need to think about that in our lives. Walk circumspectly. Pastor? Pastor?